guys, Felicia here. So before we start the show, I just want to ask you guys to help us make sure that we're creating content you really, really want to hear and make sure we stay on topics that you need help with. And we want to make sure we're giving you practical tips, tricks, and tactics that you need for your career journey and to get where you're trying to go. And so we have a survey that we would like for you to do. It should only take about five minutes. There's going to be a link in the show notes for you to do our survey. If you are on our email list, you'll also get an email reminding you to please do this survey so that we make sure we're giving you the best content possible and making sure that if we have any advertisers, that they are advertisers that are speaking to your specific needs and that we promote things that are going to truly help you and not just be for some commercial gain because that's not what we're about over here. We are here at the Trill MBA Show to help you really, truly skyrocket your career in all the ways that make you whole and happy and healthy and prosperous because we about these bags, okay? (laughs) All right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Trill MBA Show. I'm your host, Felicia Ann Rose Anuha, aka the Trillist MBA. You will ever know. And I'm here to help you survive and thrive in corporate America by giving you the truth and being as real as only I can be. Happy Sunday, you guys. Welcome back to the show. I'm so excited that you decided to spend your podcast listening time on this show. So I want to say thank you for coming. Today, I'm going to dig deep into a topic that has really been on my mind a lot as I am a relatively new people leader in my career and something that means so much to me, mostly because I've had so many bad managers, is being a great manager. And so I'm constantly picking myself apart whether I'm trying to think through how to say things better, how to communicate better, like how to show up better. So I have been on a mental exercise for a while trying to make sure that I'm developing into the leader that's going to drive the most impact in my company. And with that today, I really want to dig deeper into that point in your career where you go from individual contributor to a team leader. And that transition in your career, first of all, it can be kind of dramatic. (laughs) But thank you guys for filling out the survey because a lot of people indicated this is something that they wanted me to spend some time talking about. So this won't be the last episode, but this episode really is going to dig deep on two main things that you really, really need to think about and do as you're looking to grow your career and move from an individual contributor where you just have to worry about what your task and what your objectives are to actually now managing a team Not only do you have to worry about the overarching business objectives and goals and your personal business objectives and goals, but now you also got to worry about these other people and their goals and their objectives and what they want. And making that shift, it can be difficult, but today we're going to outline some things that you need to start thinking about. So this is really a mindset episode about how to think through the mindset and the skills that you need to make this transition successfully. And when I say successful, success looks like all kinds of things. Success is I made it without cussing anybody out. (laughs) That can be success. So in this first segment, I want to start with focusing on mindset. 
So a lot of us need a mindset makeover, right? We're so used to, hey, I make this widget. I do it this way, right? I know what I'm doing. And we get very comfortable in the day-to-day flow, especially if you've been with your organization for more than a year or two, especially the sweet spot, I think, is like the 18 months. If you've been in your role for 18 months and you're probably not going to get moved to a new role or, you know, if you're in that situation and you're not going to get moved and you're going to be there another at least six months, by this point, you've seen the sun go around the moon a number of times now in the business and you know the ebbs and flow of the business. And so you are now comfortable with how things work. You know where you fit in and you start feeling very confident and you start mastering all the things that you are tasked to work on to bring value to the organization. Hopefully you guys feel me. I always tell people when you get a new role, Give yourself at least 14 months because 14 months gives you a whole year plus another two months to start picking up the patterns of, oh, yeah, we did this time last year. We did this this time last year. We did this. Oh, this is how this is going to go. And so you start picking up on the cadence of how the business flows to create money, right? Value for the organization. And so Once you do that, then you really start to understand where you fit in. You start to understand how to ask better questions to get better information so you can really like knock it out the park with your job. So that's any role, right? So now as that individual contributor, you're comfortable, you're good, you're ready, you've made relationships, you've done all the things and you're just kind of moving and grooving along. And if you're like me, And you know, I want to climb this ladder. I want to be an executive. Like you didn't come here to play games. You came here to get these bags. Then what that means is at some point, you are going to have to grow and groom yourself for leadership and leadership of people. If you're like, I'm going to be an executive and I don't care if it's, going from a teacher in a classroom to assistant principal, or if you're in the government and you're going from, you know, your job grade three to now you're a job grade 13. And I'm totally making that up, guys. (laughs) Or if you work in a university and you go from a program manager to an assistant dean or something of that nature, right? This all applies to when you make that first step. And I'm going to be honest with you. (laughs) Most people, including present company, they don't do well. You can have the best of intentions. And to me, people that do really, really well with this transition, it's a fluke. It's a... I don't know, you have this extreme self-awareness or you have this great intuition, like you've evolved as a human on so many levels (laughs) that you probably should have been a people manager years before you became one. But most people in their career, when they start managing people and teams of people, you are trying to understand how to get things done you are still in a mindset where you're trying to make sure you're shining because that's all you know. And you don't yet know how to shine through your team shining because that's really like how you need to think about it. But that idea, if nobody's teaching you, that idea is so lost (laughs) because at the end of the day, you still got, This person above you, who's your manager, who's looking at you for what they're expecting you to deliver. And they don't care who does it really like they're expecting you to get your team to do it. But in actuality, the shit just needs to get done. And they looking at you like it's on you. And so this idea like, oh, when it used to just be on me, I could just get it done and do it. But now it's on you means it's on your team and 
it's on you to lead the team to the finish line and get things done. And that to go from a doer to a leader, it's a mind fuck. Oh my head. Because according to your personality, like for me, I care. And let Brianna tell it. <laughs> my old manager slash my new BFF. <laughs> I love Brianna Jones. She's been on the show. But let her tell it about me. She's like, you care too much. You care way too much. And I realized, you know, it was so funny. She said to me, I don't know how you're going to make it as a CEO because your heart is just all in it. And I was like, what? And she was like, ma'am, you can't even fire people. You don't even know how to let people go. And I was like, because I believe everybody can be rehabilitated. (laughs) And I believe everybody needs a chance. I'm here to tell you, listen, everything you thought you knew, throw that out the window. And be open to learning a new way of thinking, right? I want you to take a minute and reflect on the managers you've had and you thought, oh my God, these are the most horrible people ever. Think about those people. Now, were they horrible? Probably. They probably were. Like, there's a piece of it where your perception of them is probably true. But I want you to start thinking about, you know, how you would have said things differently or treated you differently if you were them. But then I also want you to think about, would you be open to how you would do it? And I know for me personally, I've had to take a step back and I'd have to be like, okay, if shoes were on the other foot, how would I feel if somebody said this to me? And I think what I've learned is I have to really work to take my feelings out of the equation and start asking questions. And so what that gave me insight to is to really think about when situations arrive with people you're working with, questions are a good, good way to not only drive for clarity, but questions are a good way to have impactful communication that lands better than you just directly telling people, hey, this is what it is. And so if you are known to be a direct communicator, one thing you can do to massage your language is ask more questions than you make declarative statements. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you're trying to understand if you're working, whether it be a cross-functional or a direct report, And you're working with this person and they're just not meeting your expectations or there's some kind of disconnect. There's some tension there and you need to resolve it. First, seek to understand. And sometimes it's hard to ask questions that don't sound accusatory. And so in order not to ask questions that sound accusatory, Instead of asking questions that sound like curiosity, here's how you have to frame up your question. So you want to start with, hey, I just want to get a feel for how you see the project going, how you see the timeline tracking, what roadblocks have you seen? I'm really curious and I want to make sure that I'm being helpful. So I'd really love more insight into what you're seeing in your perspective and then let them talk. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me see if I've got this. So I approach the person and I say, Hey, why the hell did you do it like that? Was that good? Aw. Right. I think something that I did and didn't think about was just like, Hey, this is how I see it. So this is how it is. Exactly. And that's not necessarily true. Like it's true for you. But it might not be true for this other person. This is hard. And also they may give you insights and show you how to communicate with them better and get your intended communication across in a way that leaves them a whole being and not, you know, 
misinterpreting what you're saying or being in their feelings about what you're saying. Because again, at the end of the day, you're dealing with a bunch of human beings, human beings who come from all different kinds of walks of life and they have different things in their backseat. And you don't know what's in somebody's backseat. You just don't. Like sometimes it seems like, oh yeah, this person there, they say this, they're this, I got it. And no, sometimes that's not the case. And sometimes people are just liars. Why? Sometimes people just make shit up. And so you have to navigate, you know, these people lying to you. You also have to think through that. So I want you to take away that when you get promoted into a role where you're going to be managing people, whether it's one person or 10 people, it doesn't matter how many people you're managing. You really want to start thinking through how you think about connecting, communicating, and how you're going to get them to do the work. How you're going to move from, I got to get it done to, we've got to get it done, which we all know that means y'all got to get this part done. I got to do my part, but y'all got to do this, right? Everybody got a part to play. There is deep value in having this higher level of emotional intelligence. And that's something that you have to work to cultivate. And sometimes I'm not going to lie. It's really hard because you are human too. You have shit going on too. And sometimes things are urgent or they are made to feel very urgent. And sometimes you're trying to balance the shit from above you. And good, good managers are really good at not letting that shit roll downhill. But I'm going to tell you right now, as a new manager, sometimes that shit got to roll so people understand your position and like the spot that you're in as this new people manager so they can see like, oh, she really trying to help. Sometimes you got to let that shit roll on them a little bit so they can understand. (laughs) At least that's what I've encountered in my career. But when we get back from the break, in addition to this mindset change, I'm also going to talk about the skills Because there are some key skills that you need to think through and you need to start flexing these muscles that are way different as a leader than a doer. So we're going to talk about not just the mindset change, but like the practical skills that you'll need to work to cultivate and develop when we get back from the break. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, I appreciate you for filling out the audience survey. Keep it coming. They're rolling in. I really appreciate it. This is helping us so much as we work to develop advertising pitches to companies that we believe would actually serve you and actually help you in your career. So I have some services and products I know I love as a Black woman working in this country then I think there are some things that you would love to if you had access, if you knew about them. And I want to be that conduit to share those things with you. But that's not free. (laughs) Why? Because this podcast ain't free. (laughs) This studio, these videos, these edits, ask Chris. He'll tell you, not free. So... But we want to hear from you so that we make sure that not only are we bringing you great products and sponsors and outside people and all those things, but most importantly, we make sure we're bringing you great content. So even this episode today, the reason why you're hearing this episode today is because of the audience survey. And you guys said this is the content that you wanted to hear. So thank you again for filling out that audience survey. In the new year, we'll be giving away coaching packages from people who filled out the audience survey. You will have your name put in the drawing for some coaching packages that we'll give away in the new year, where we'll strategize with where you're going to go next in your career and just come out here and kill it in all the gifts that you got. So 
If you haven't filled out this audience survey, please do. The link is in the show notes. So as soon as you finish listening to this whole episode, just click on that link. It'll take you less than five minutes. I promise it took me like three minutes. It's only a few questions, but I really appreciate you guys. And I appreciate you for listening to the show. Now let's get back to the show. All right, we're back and we were discussing how you had to change your mindset when you go from individual contributor to a team leader. Now, I'm going to get into these skills and there are some core skills that you need as you are transitioning and becoming a leader of people. And I have a list. I don't know if I'm going to go through this whole list, but I know what I will do is I will put a link to this list in the show notes. But there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten things. I probably can hit on most of them. I just won't go into much detail because some of them are, they're right there, right? So one of the first things, and I think this, as you rise, you have to lean more into this, but transitioning that first step, I don't know if this is like the big, big thing, right? So being a visionary leader and visionary thinking. So leaders are often characterized by their ability to see a bigger picture and they have a clear vision for the future and can inspire others to work towards a common goal. That's something you really have to start to build a muscle and it needs to continue to grow as you climb. Now we'll say when you're in that, I was working on my projects. Now I'm helping people and working on my projects and helping them do their projects. And we're all a team and I'm responsible for their performance evaluations and all that stuff. And I got to train them and care about them and all that. The thing that you need to understand is you will use this visionary thinking, but it's in combination with the next thing I'm seeing on this list, communication skills, which is brass tacks. Like you have to be an effective and excellent communicator. And I'm going to tell you right now, most of us are not. And even when you think you are, you not. (laughs) Trust me, because if you're not communicating for impact and you don't have like a hundred percent of the time, you don't focus on what's the impact to this person that I'm talking to. And you're not going to be a hundred percent on that. Then you're going to work to build that muscle. And the reason why it's so important, because you can have a vision, you can see the bigger picture clearly, and you can have this visionary thinking. But if you can't communicate that picture and create a clear picture and communicate it and get everybody on the same page. And I can tell you from personal experience right now, like I struggle with my team that I work with. I mean. They probably think I'm wishy-washy and not clear because I am struggling in the visionary thinking. So I have this big picture in my mind about where we're going, where this company is growing to, all those things. But I don't think I communicate it clearly enough. And when I say that, I mean, I can tell you what the vision is and I can paint the picture. But also in that you need to be able to inspire others to work toward the common goal. And what you need to do that is you need to communicate the dots and help people connect the dots along the way. And that's where I need to grow because my ADHD be having a ball. And one day I'll be like, yeah, we got to work on this. And that's one piece of the vision. And then people are like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, yeah, we also got to work on this. And we got to work on this. And it's my grandma, she used to say, you got too many irons in the fire. There's too many irons in the fire. You got to focus. And it's no different when you're working in a big organization. You've got to have the ability to focus your team on that one common goal and connect all the dots for them. And a lot of that has to do with decisiveness which is the other critical skill that you have to develop.
Leaders must make decisions. And sometimes those decisions are under a lot of pressure. And a leader has to have the mentality that involves being able to assess the situation, consider all the information that's available to you, and it won't be complete information. And then you have to make the timely decisions. And you have to be okay with that. And a vast majority of people don't like making decisions. They connect decision making with confrontation. And you have to be okay with being confrontational and just decide and make the decision. And don't have people sitting in limbo. That is the worst. Oh, it is the worst. When everybody's waiting on you to make a decision and you won't make a decision. Don't do that to your teams. That is horrible. Also on this list are empathy and emotional intelligence. And again, emotional intelligence is a skill you can learn. The thing about empathy, I don't know if you can really learn empathy. Either you have it or you don't. I don't know. If I'm wrong about that, you guys hit me up. Let me know if I'm wrong about that. The other thing is you really have to learn how to run the racy. So who's responsible, who's accountable, who's consulted, and who, I forgot what the I is. Oh my God, that's going to drive me nuts. (laughs) Informed, who's informed, right? So that's the racy. And that just, whenever you're running projects, you want to understand who owns what, How does everybody on the team fit in? Well, this is you as a leader. This is you. You are responsible for that racy. You are accountable to that racy and you lead the racy and you make the racy, right? So leaders always take responsibility for the outcomes, whether they did it or somebody on the team did it, whether it went right or wrong, you're the leader. It is your responsibility to take accountability for both success and failures. And sometimes a lot of people have a hard time with that, right? But it comes with the person who has the D, the decision-making power. The other thing you have to move to is just being confident and you have to be able to assert yourself. Then there's servant leadership, which I am totally down for, I'm telling you. When you make sure your team is good, you're always going to be good when your team is good. You have to continuously learn and have that also in your mindset. I'm going to continuously learn. But the thing is, you have to drive for that. You have to plan for it. You have to put in your calendar. You have to understand that you don't have all the answers. You're never going to have all the answers. You're a human being. Human beings don't have all the answers. And I know some people out there pretending... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, it's all fake it till you make it. I'm telling you right now, you don't have to do that. Just make a concerted effort to understand. I don't know this and I need to go figure out and learn this, right? You have to be adaptable. And you also have to be comforting to your team when things are ambiguous and you have to be agile to the situation. You have to adapt. And so leaders have this ability, but this is something that can also be learned. This is something that you have to work and practice and you have to, especially when you're super type A, you have to learn how to chill out. (laughs) Like you got to woosah and you got to be proactive about your problem solving. But I think one of the number one characteristics of a leader, and I don't know again if this one can be learned, but this is also a skill is in communicating your integrity and building trust. And the ability to build trust is something you really, again, have to build that muscle. But trust is the foundation of leadership. Because if your team doesn't trust you, they're going to wreak havoc on everything, right? They're not going to tell you stuff. It's just going to be a lot. And I mean, hell, they might even (laughs) try to take you to court, child, listen. (laughs) But that won't. Saying about that. Wait, what happened? But it's a lot. It's a lot. And if you don't build trust with your team, it sucks. And to build trust, you really just need to be consistent and honest. And you need to really work hard to 
communicate in a way that shows them that you are operating in integrity. And that's so important. And again, you can cultivate all of these leadership characteristics in yourself. It is really one day at a time. Just keep building that muscle. At the end of the day, moving from an individual contributor to a team leader is all about growth, right? It's one foot in front of the other, growing every day. You are growing not only through the skill set that you're exercising as an individual contributor that you've honed in on. And so like maybe you're good at presentations or, you know, some of the other transferable skills like you're good at project management or program management or you're good at writing briefs or you're good at financial spreadsheets or these tactical things that you do every day to manage your job. Maybe you're really good at calendar management even, right? But now, you know, using those skills, you solve those business problems. That's one key thing you need and you've got that. Now that you're transitioning, the other key skill set that you need is to be able to solve the people problems. And all of those characteristics that I just talked about, they help you solve the people problem. And this is where, you know, it takes a lot of time and energy and effort because now you're building new muscle, learning new skills. But you're also not only just dealing with the business problems and getting things done tactically, you're also now having to solve the people problems and then also spending time to get those things done as well. And I'm here to tell you right now, ooh, child, it could be a lot. <laughs> it can be a lot, but don't get discouraged. You can do it. And this is where the bags reside. Like. It's very rare that you see individual contributors that are high paid. And I mean, like paid, like C-suite paid, right? Most of those people are highly specialized subject matter experts if they're paid like executive compensation salaries, right? They have a very specialized skill set and they're in demand and there's very few of them. I don't know what roles those are exactly. In fact, I need to go try to figure out (laughs) what and who, just in case this whole entrepreneur thing doesn't work out, right? But listen, when we get back from the break, the thing I want to end the show with is just talking about the reality of people management and being in management. And we're going to talk about the most important thing when we get back from the break. Hey there, travel enthusiasts. Are you tired of struggling to find hair and skincare products that cater to your unique needs while on the go? Look no further than blacktravelbox.com. Black Travel Box is your one-stop shop for travel size natural hair and skincare products, specifically curated for Black travelers. No more settling for generic products that don't work for your hair type or skin tone. Whether you're jet setting to a tropical island or embarking on a cross-country road trip, Black Travel Box has you covered with their convenient and TSA-approved travel kit. Plus, by supporting Black Travel Box, you're not just getting high quality products, but you're also supporting a black owned business that is dedicated to promoting inclusivity in the travel industry. So travel in confidence, style and grace with Black Travel Box. Visit blacktravelbox.com now and get ready to slay your next trip. Don't let your beauty routine suffer while you explore the world. And hey guys, let me tell you, Black Travel Box products are amazing, especially that body butter. Listen, I got a promo code for you. Use the code JETSET, that's J-E-T-S-E-T, all caps, JETSET. And you can get a discount from Black Travel Box because of who? The Trillist MBA. Happy travels, beautiful people. 
Now, let's get back to the show. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. If you haven't gotten your Black Travel Box stuff and you know you're about to do all this holiday travel, get to it, y'all. What are we doing? Go to blacktravelbox.com. All right. So we've talked about the mindset change you need to make. We've talked about the skills that you're going to have to work to develop that are different from the hard skills that you've had. Now you've got to develop those soft skills, right? But at the end of the day, the truth of the matter is when you are people manager, regardless of the objectives on the paper, your main objective is to motivate and inspire your team. Whoa, what? I was this age, (laughs) this big age that I am now when somebody told me that. And it was an aha moment for me because I think all this time, I thought a manager's job was to block and tackle and protect their team and, you know, do everything you can to help them shine and all these things. And my intentions were great, (laughs) but the impact, not so great. Right. And I realized like, Oh, what you need to do to inspire and motivate somebody is all really about not what you want to do for them. So like everything that I was saying, you know, how I define being a good manager was me doing something for them. So blocking and tackling, making sure they had, you know, the right compensation, the right title, the right workload, all these things, right? It's like this protection. That's what I want to do for you. But when you want to motivate and inspire somebody, you have to actually look at what they need from their perspective. So you may have a perspective of what your team needs, but that might not match what they think they need. And the only way you can motivate and inspire anybody is to understand what they think they need. And so that was a hard fought lesson for me that I will carry with me for the rest of the rest of my life. The most important thing. But the most important thing that you need to do, and there's two components to this, One, you have to build trust. And I know (laughs) we say all the time on here, don't trust nobody. (laughs) But there is a level of trust that you have to get to in order to be an effective leader. And part of building that trust is also delivering clear and impactful communication. If you don't have a good understanding or grasp of what you're communicating and making sure that person is taking away what you're trying to communicate, it just causes all kinds of confusion. And building trust and communicating for impact clearly, those two things are the foundation of being a successful people manager. And if you get nothing else from this episode, those are the skills that you absolutely have to continuously work to get better and better and better at. And again, it's hard because every person has their unique personality with their little funky quirks and all the things. Even I got it, right? Like even my personality, Lord help us. But when you want to really be impactful as a people leader, You have to understand the people you're working with. And that is probably the biggest mistake that I have made in my career, whether it be I was leading teams of cross-functional partners that I had no real authority over. I might have some decision-making rights, but not real authority. Or I really had my direct reports. And, you know, it's interesting I do want to share before we get out of here, something I was thinking about, and maybe you guys can hit me up, and ask at Trill MBA and answer this question for me. I'll give you the example. So I had an assistant, Maya. Maya emailed me 
And she said, hey, I really enjoyed working with you. I'm paraphrasing, but it was really sweet. I really enjoyed working with you, but I got this bigger, better full-time opportunity because she's working for me part-time. And so pretty much today, my last day, girl, because next week I'm going to be off to the races with this new person and their full-time money paying (laughs) gig, right? And I was like, oh, okay. And the only thing I was sad about is that whatever we've been taught, whatever we learned, and I know this, and if I were her, I would have done it the same way. I can't imagine with what I know doing it any differently. But what I learned was I didn't build enough trust with you where you could trust me to say, hey, I am looking for full-time opportunities and I am going to weave you. <laughs> And so let's plan for it. I would have greatly appreciated that and not saying anybody should do that. Like, how do you know? I just recognize that we didn't have that level of trust where she could tell me, hey, I'm preparing to leave you. So let's make this transition plan if I get this job. And if I don't get the job, I'm still here, right? I would have been grateful for that. Wouldn't have felt any kind of way. It is what it is. You're working for me (laughs) part-time. Like, (laughs) I only have so many expectations. And so now I'm thinking through, like, as I build my company, I would love to build a company where, whether you're part-time, full-time, contract, whatever you do for this company, that you're able to talk to your manager so that, one, My company, from a continuity standpoint, from a workflow standpoint, we can keep things going. We can keep things moving. And, you know, everybody has a heads up and it's good. And like your last days here are great. Nobody's, you know, mad at you or giving you the side eye. People are happy for you. People are happy you're transitioning on to something more and better and greater. And that, Hopefully we helped you, you know, get there, right? Like, it's not this thing that we have now. Like, if I had a client, I would never tell them to tell their manager they were looking or they were going to leave or anything because people get really nasty and they do things to try to push you out. But answer me this, is there a way to build enough trust with your manager or your organization to be honest about your intentions and to set them up, you know, with a great transition plan for when you leave, whether they fill the role or backfill the role before you left or not? Like, is there a way to do this that we help each other and there's a win-win? As far today, I say no, but I want to understand, is there something I can do different in my company where we have a different environment, where we think differently, that we are creating a new way of working in this country and in this world? That's my goal. And so I'd love to hear from you guys about your thoughts about working for a company like, would you trust it? What would your manager or the organization have to tell you to trust it? And I think a lot of it would be, you know, over time, the proof is in the pudding, right? So just so y'all know, with Maya, you know, if there's a position here, she always will be welcomed back. I have no ill will. I think she's dope. I think she's going to do great things. I hope we get to work together in the future. I don't know. I would just like for feedback. So if you have any, shoot me an email, ask at trillivier.com because I thought I was a great manager, but <laughs> who knows? Who knows? But yeah, guys, we're going to get out of here. It is super duper late here. I procrastinated today on record day. So, but I still, you know, we're going to get it done, y'all. We're going to get it done as always. So with that said, if you have a particular situation or you need some advice, you can schedule a one-on-one coaching call with me at trillmba.com slash coaching and set up a one-on-one with me. I'm happy to answer any questions, help you strategize, 
figure out your particular workplace dilemma. If I don't have the answer or I don't know, I'll definitely connect you with somebody who can help you in your particular situation regarding your career and workplace. Most things I can handle, but sometimes like if it gets legal, I have to send you to attorney Anitra or refer you to say, hey, you got to see an attorney on this. I know my limitations that way. Or if there's a certain industry, I know people, I'm always happy to connect anyone and everyone, especially on LinkedIn. So trillingba.com slash coaching for connecting with me one-on-one. We also have slots if you want a longer term coaching package. I also have that available. We can consult on that. So you can also set up 15 minutes with me to talk through, you know, what a coaching package would be like. And we'll talk about your goals and what you'd like and pricing and all those things. You can always just hit me up and send me an email and ask me a question. I want to have time. I definitely answer all the questions. Usually I answer questions within about a day or two. I'm pretty good about email. And I'll do the best with the information you give me. But you can hit us up at ask at trillingba.com to ask your question or concern or just send me a note and tell me how much you love the show. Or, you know, tell me like, nah, girl, we ain't never going to tell you when we leave. <laughs> you can do that too, right? So again, that's ask at trillmba.com to email us or to schedule time, go to trillmba.com slash coaching and schedule time to chat with me and let's get you where you need to go, sis. All right, y'all. Have a great Thanksgiving holiday. Eat something for me. I think I'm going to be eating good though this year. I think it's going to be a good Thanksgiving. I'm excited. I'm going to get on a plane and go see my friends and my family. So that's going to be amazing. I need this time, but I hope that over this break, you start thinking through, you know, what kind of people leader do you want to be? And what skills do you need to start building your muscle to be that people leader? Okay. So until next week, guys, keep it trill. The Trill MBA Show is a Fair World Corp LLC production. Executive produced by Felicia and Rose Inuha. Sound design and editing by Chris Mann with Pod Shaper. Theme music is Kick Push by Ryan Little. Keep it trill every day, y'all.